In this video we will make a program that solves a second order polynomial equation. And we demonstrate uh, if, math and help. So let's first tell the user what we intend to do. Solve equation L which has the shape like this. Ax2 plus Bx plus C is zero. And then we ask the user to input these values as a float. We convert the output of the input function to float. And we say enter A. And we do the same for B and C. Let's add some comments to our program. So second order poly equation. with ABC formula. And then um, when uh, the user has entered A, B, and C, we can calculate the discriminant, the squared, we could do it like this, or we do it like this which is uh, the, the multiplication is actually faster than the power. So for, for if it's just a square, I tend to use the multiplication. Even though in this case, computation speed will not really be a problem. Uh, let's run and see if it uh, works so far. After typing more than five lines, I tend to test the program to see if it, uh, if it works. Two, three, one. And that seems to work just fine. If we now check the value of d, you see that actually a variable name is case sensitive in Python, so we have to use capital D. I see in this case that it's 1. Um, 9 minus 8, yeah. So the problem seems to, uh, seems to work. Now, what we, uh, the next step that we can do is that we can calculate the two solutions, x1, um, by taking minus b minus the square root of d. And for square root, we use the square root function. Um, but this is not a standard uh, function. Uh, it's not a standard function of the language. But you see also that the color coding, that it doesn't change color like print or float and input. And that's because um, in, in, in this language, uh, program, the math functions are not part of the standard, uh, the standard language. So we have to, uh, even though they're of course installed when you install Python, but you have to import a module to get them. And for this you use the math module, so you can say import math, and then we can type math point in front of it, and as soon as we type math point, you see that in fact a whole list of functions that is available in the math module appears. Also variables like pi or order numbers, orders number e is, is, uh, is given. But when it's a function, of course, you have to use the, the brackets after it. And then um, you see the whole list of functions here. Log is actually the natural logarithm. Log 10 is the logarithm with the base 10. And of course, this is just a list of those functions. If you want to know more about what's in the math module, there are two ways to find it out. Go to help the Python documentation, go to the index, and then search for math and click on the math module. You find an extensive description of what functions are inside the math module, and what they do. Another way to do it is to simply type help math. And you get a, 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 sh a slightly shorter description of, of all these functions. And then you can, uh, can check those out. And if you want to know what, what uh, if you only want to see the text on one function, you can also give this as a keyword, which is text, so you need to use quotes. We can also use math.squareRoot. And then you see that for this function, square root in math, returns indeed the square root of the variable that you pass onto the function. So one solution, second solution is two, and then this has to be a plus sign. 
well the math point typing math point sign math point cos is not really a way to make this look neatly i would prefer to leave it out to simply type square root and that is possible by importing this function from math into our program as if it was defined here so we import the name basically uh, from the function inside the math module into our own program and now we can simply use square root you can even import all math functions with the asterisk with the star the star import which is a dangerous practice because of course now the the reader can no longer see where the square root function comes from and if there are multiple modules that use the asterisk import then you can no longer tell which function gives which uh, which where each function is stored if you're interested in finding out what it really is but for math of course sine cosine square root are known well known and therefore this is acceptable even though of course this is a neater way to do this and you can also say for instance import it and you can give it your own name uh, import square root as wortle and then the, the wortle would be the new name of the function that you can then use inside your module so from math import square root is the neatest way to do this and now the program should already work two three one and uh, it does indeed work but it does not print the solution as yet so the next step that we do is we say print two solutions the solutions are x1 comma x2 and now this of course will run really well if the uh, discriminant is positive but if we have a negative discriminant then we will get a math domain error to prevent this it's better to check whether this is larger or equal than zero with an if statement and only then calculate it and then we can also put in an else statement which basically says hey, sorry there are no solutions And in this way, you can, uh, the if statement now, you see a number of things have happened. We've put in if with a condition, and this could be a whole list of conditions even. You can say, and a is larger than one, or b is less than three. In this case, you want to use some brackets to make sure which part is uh, evaluated first. So, so, but if this is what you mean, um, um, and not uh, x or uh, c less than three whatever you can uh, use a lot of things in here so and all these tests can be combined with and or and not and with not they're inverted and with and and or they can be combined and you can also see that we can compare variables or expressions in this case d large or equal there's also an option that less or equal or is equal to equal signs because one means an assignment statement or it could be not equal and this of course has the same meaning as not equal and that's an exclamation mark and an equal sign that basically uh, so there's a, a lot of combinations there in which you can these are basically the operators of logical conditions and or not and these are comparison operators in which you compare two variables in this case larger or equal than zero like this so now we can run it again and we can do one or four and we can see the solutions are minus two minus two of course in this case the discriminant is equal to zero and we could uh, therefore refine this even we could also say if d is d is larger than zero and then oh by the way we also if we now have a wrong one that the solutions will always be printed here if we so let's uh, fix that so if we there's still something wrong if we run it two three three ten then the, he says there are no solutions as if the else prints but he also says then next the print name x1 is not defined so apparently this part is indented this is therefore one block of code in some languages you have brackets or begin and end around it but here it's simply that they have the same margin if uh, whether it's one two or three space it doesn't really matter the the standard is four but they have the same margin and that makes it one block of code which is only executed if this is true with the else 
you can specify a block of code which is executed if this is not true. You can even add a whole list elif in there for, with new conditions, which are only checked if the first one is not true. It will then, as a second attempt, try this. And you can even make the list very long. And um, as long as it, each of them ends with a column to indicate that there will be a block of code, and you see the editor automatically indents for you then, to indent there's a block of code. So both the if and the else have uh, at the end a column. And Python also knows then that there is a block of code is expected. In this case, the mistake we made is that this, of course, has to be inside this block of code. So it has to be moved, but it also has to be given the same margin. And then we can always add something at the end of the program, which will always be executed, because this is the same indent level as this if and else if. So it's it, with the if, checks this condition and only selects this code or this code. And you can even inside that have more if statements. You could, for, for instance, say if they, the is equal to zero, then we have only one solution. Uh, minus b divided by two times a, and we print one solution, comma x. And then in the else branch, again a column, that's where we then have the two solutions. So we have to add more spaces because this if is part of this block of code here. And then this is within this, so this d larger or equal to zero has to be true. And then inside this block, we can again add a check and say, if d is equal to zero, um, Check this, do this bit of code, else do this bit of code. Of course, this could also have been an L if here, if we simply would have checked for a larger than zero here. And move this bit of code here. Take away a few spaces for aesthetics. But as long as they have the same margin, it will be one block of code. And even though I've said that with floating points, it's not often not useful to check for equality here, uh, whether something's equal, uh, here it might work. Let's see. Indeed, it will find, it will now go into this if, check larger than zero, no, equal to zero, yes, and then it will never arrive here, and only print this part. So this shows how to use the if, the math module, and the help.